we just left the site of the infamous Andersonville prisoner of war camp. So if you haven't watched those videos, you can go back and catch those. And where I'm standing at right now is the small community of Andersonville. So Union prisoners that would have ended up at Andersonville would have come in along these rails and then would have been marched to the camp. Well, today we're going to be going to a little museum here in Andersonville called the Drummer Boy Museum. I've checked it out online and if they have everything that I think they have, uh, this is going to be one heck of a stop. Okay, so we just got in here, and uh, oh my gosh, the temperature is so much more pleasant in here than it is out there. But uh, this is the Drummer Boy Museum, so we're going to kind of take a look around and uh, see what we can learn. Now, as you're entering the museum here, of course, we are in Andersonville, so they really have this incredible diorama showing uh, the Andersonville prison. So this is similar to what it would have looked like. Of course, in the prior videos, it was just field that we were looking at, but here you can see like the camp tents. You can see that swamp in the middle, and then all the little, what they called pigeon roost or guard towers on the outside. Wow, that is, really well done. And oh my goodness, guns, guns, guns all from the Civil War very very cool oh look at this <laughs> here are two bullets right here that were found fused together at Gettysburg that is really interesting to me one of the most horrifying pieces of weaponry in the Civil War was something called grape shot and they were these like little miniature cannonballs that were loaded into cannons and then shot out like a just evil shotgun. And here they have some, some grape shot here. And they also have a uh, Confederate grape shot mold. I've never seen one of those before. You know what? If for such a small museum, this place really does have all kinds of things that I've never seen before, such as cigars from the Civil War. <laughs> now, here's something awful that we've seen before, a uh, surgeon's amputation saw. But here's something that we haven't seen, a dead gum piece of a jawbone with a bullet lodged in it. Oh my gosh. Here's something else that's kind of interesting. This is a hospital bullet with teeth marks in it, so I guess they would give these to the patients to bite down on for the pain. My gosh. Here they have a bunch of different uniforms of the Civil War. So here would be a Union artillery officer, and they have somebody representing the uh, U.S. colored troops, so holding a, a ramrod there. And of course this is the Drummer Boy Museum, so naturally you have to have a drummer boy. Uh, most of the time these kids were 15, 16 years old. The Civil War was the last time that uh, we had a conflict that involved drummer boys. Again, I just can't get over all of the interesting things they have here. It's a U.S. Cavalry branding iron. Um, 
some items found at, at Bull Run. Here's a 9th New York breastplate, spurs found at Gettysburg. Just all kinds of things here. Oh my gosh, I would love, love, love to have a powder keg filled with Civil War mini balls. Look at that. So now obviously we're looking at the Confederate section of this museum. So we have you know, a typical Confederate soldier here. Uh, this flag in the background, this is an original flag. And uh, this is a modified version. The first version I think was all white and had the, uh, the cross up there. But if the fold was just right, it looked like a flag of surrender. So they ended up modifying it and putting that, that red strip along the width. Um, and then over here, we have a Confederate drummer boy. Uh, this is called a Zouave drummer boy. So you can see that it has like the red braid and cord piping. There's all this red trim. Uh, this, I, is, I understand, is the only known uniform like this. There might be one other. Pretty crazy. So this is kind of interesting. This is a portable tabernacle that was used by Catholic chaplains. Hmm. Okay, now this is pretty dang cool. So this is a obviously Union uh, uniform that would have belonged to a cavalry officer. It actually belonged to a guy named Captain Albert Wilbur with the 16th New York Cavalry. And he was part of the group that hunted for John Wilkes Booth after the assassination of Lincoln. My gosh, how cool is that? Here's something else that I appreciate. You know, they have the, the military stuff, but they also include an example of women's fashion during the 1860s. So I can appreciate that as well. That's, that's really neat. And all of this stuff is original. Gosh, I can't believe they have all of this. Dang, this is pretty cool. They have a pair of gloves that was worn by Ulysses S. Grant whenever he was president uh, says that they were worn to a dinner given to him by the people of Japan on August 25th, 1879. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this, this museum is not very big, but I'm telling you, there are so many cool things here to see. So I just pointed out the uniform of this guy, uh, Captain Albert Wilbur. Uh, who hunted down John Wilkes Booth. Now, John Wilkes Booth was not the only person involved in the Lincoln assassination. There was a conspiracy to kind of like decapitate all of the head of government. Uh, all of the conspirators met at a boarding house that was owned by a lady named Mary Surratt. She ended up getting implicated in the conspiracy and became the first woman in the United States to be executed by hanging. I tell you that because of this. What I'm getting ready to show you is, I, I've saved the best for last. This is the most incredible piece in the museum in my opinion. Okay, so here you can see a picture of Mary Surratt along with some of the other conspirators in the Lincoln assassination. And on July 7th, 1865 at the Arsenal Prison in Washington, D.C., she was hung. They brought her up to the gallows and removed this bonnet off of her head, put on a hood, put a rope around her neck, and then she was executed. I cannot believe that they have this here. <laughs> that is amazing. And then, yeah, here's, here's a picture that was taken at the execution. Wow. Well, that was the Drummer Boy Museum. I am thoroughly impressed with this place. It, it really is amazing uh, to see everything that they have here. They're run completely on donations. They don't get any kind of funding whatsoever. Uh, so if you're ever in Andersonville, definitely come to this place because you're gonna see things here that you will not see anywhere else. And uh, you visiting and donating is, is going to help keep places like this up and running. So glad that we stopped here today. 
All right, we're off to the next place.